Greetings, greetings, everyone. It is Friday, one o'clock, and it is an extra special day today. It is Friday, August 27th, and we have a special guest, Carrie Kim. There she is. Hello, Carrie. I am going to add you in. Hold on here. Oh, there you go. Okay. All right, Carrie, I just accepted you. Yay, it worked. <laughs> Hey, hi. How are you? How I'm are good. You? How about I'm you? Today. It's been a while since I had someone live. Ross has got on. Hey, Ross. Hey, Ross. Hey, Mary Ellen. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Yes. I'm excited because it's been a while since I've had a special guest. And it's special to me because I have you <laughs> on. I just saw you recently at Project Prairie. Um, and you know it was kind of hard to depart nebraska but uh oh i'm hoping carrie's connection is uh is gonna work but it looks like it might have been frozen a little bit but she'll connect hopefully she'll connect she's on um but yes it's been a while since i've had a special guest so i'm excited to have carrie on today oh it looks like we lost connection with her let's try to Get her connected again. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm going to try to connect Carrie again. Let's see here. How are you guys doing? Hello, Kathy. How are you? Oh, good. You're back on. Carrie, can Am you I hear? Here? Okay. Yes. Sorry. All right. Okay. So I have Carrie Lotion with at Carrie Cam. We are going to talk about draping today, and a little about so connected. And also just kind of catch up with Project Prairie. Um, and I just uploaded a, a video on my, my personal experience there. So we're going to talk about that. But I have never maybe purposely, like I mentioned to you before, draped before. And I wanted to learn, like, what, what is draping? You know, what, uh, what are the benefits of draping? And... You know, why, why should you drape, Carrie? Because you're the queen of draping. You love draping. You're passionate about draping. And so you're the perfect person to ask about draping. Yes, I am. And thanks for that. And thanks for inviting me today. It's so good to catch up and see you again, too. Um, so draping is um, creating clothes in 3D as opposed to 2D flat pattern making, that type of thing. Um, for me, uh, it instantly is, it's like instant gratification. I can think of something or see something, be inspired by something and take it to the dress form with trying to, you know, work out the design. And so I think for me, that's just a huge benefit as opposed to having the you know, the sloper that fits my body that I need to um, make amends to in the sense that I need to draft new lines, draw new style lines and all of that, and then take it to fabric. Mm -hmm. So with draping, you can just cut a single piece of fabric and start going. Mark it with the um, balance lines that are important. Uh, center front, center back, bust waist and hip, usually depending, of course, on what you're working on and, and just go from there. So, yeah. So what are all the tools you would need to do draping? You know what? It doesn't take much. So you need a dress form of some kind. It doesn't have to be professional. Um, my very first dress form was one of those dial ones, you know, mm -hmm. um, that could be adjustable in that, that, what is not so great about those is that they have those places where they break apart, which is important places like center front, the side seam, the waist, you know, different, they have different places like that. So, um, but then just fabric and it doesn't, it can be old fabric. It's nice if it doesn't have a print of any kind or a pattern of any kind, because that can, you know, get confusing as to what you're looking at. It's a little harder to see. So, but anything, you know, an old sheet, um, anything that you might have around that's solid is preferred just because you need to mark it. And then when you, when you created your pattern pieces, then marking those lines, your design lines and that on the piece, you can see all of that. So, um, 
uh, a lot of people like to use a gingham, you know, they like the, what would that be? The axis of, yeah. of being horizontal lines. Yeah. Being straight up and down to me, that's busy for my eye and I can't, I can't do that, but you know, we're all different. So it's whatever, you know, works for the individual. Um, hello everyone. Yeah, <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Hi. Um, for all of those that are joining, feel free to ask any questions. If you have questions for Carrie, leave them in the comment section below and I will read them out to Carrie. Um, you know, try to scroll through them and um, read it, read them as you ask. Um, okay. So can you give us an example of draping? Um, do you, are you able to show us what draping is like a basic draping, something simple? Something simple. Um, yes, I have to get up real fast. So, um, let's see, can you see her? Yeah. I'm going to take this off. This was my little coat that I had posted about. I don't know where I have her pinned. I can't see, but. What's the scale of that mannequin, Carrie? Um, she is a half scale size 10. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I've seen so people do half scale. Um, I'm, I know this is kind of, you know, out of the, uh, out of topic, but what's the benefit of using a half scale versus a full or why do you use a half scale? Um, for me, I like being able to work on a small body. And especially because I just like to play around with design and different things like that to see if it will work and as opposed to using one of my full size dress forms. And because I go through a lot of mat muslin fabric, this is my cotton that I choose to use calico, um, you know, depending on where you are in the world. And it just, I can use scrap pieces too. So sometimes, you know, for me, um, it's it might get messy in that for somebody else but if i use my scrap pieces i feel better about that you know a little bit a little bit better for the environment that sort of thing because i go through a lot of muslin i buy it by you know the 100 yard roll type of thing so i saw yeah. your roll. I remember seeing your roll so the benefit of using the half scale is to use less fabric first as you're testing yes uh, okay as you're testing out what you want to design and then you can scale it up to your size. Correct. And I will say, I don't know how to do that. Um, Diane of Blue Dot Sews is on today. And I know we've kind of been working. That's what this paper was that I had on here because she said, send me a piece. Mm -hmm. And so I sent her this front piece and to see if we could scale it because that was a question that came up um, when I gave a draping demonstration uh, just a couple weeks ago. Got so, it. So Diane it. needs to scale up uh, a service to scale up your pattern cutting. It would be yeah. Diane. Diane yeah. at Blue Dot. <laughs> yeah, she's been um, helping me, you know, figure that out. So um, hopefully, you know, it's something, it's just a whole nother step to get into in that way. But I know it's done because, you know, like um, people, I, you know, designers do it all the time. So that type of thing. Um, Okay, so this is, I did this little draping. Oops, she's caught. So, can you see that? Sorry, my, yeah, I'm trying to hold her. I can see her. Yeah. Does she Carrie, because I know you name your mannequins. Her name is Kimmy. Kimmy. She's little, yeah. We are working on it, Diane, yeah. <laughs> um, not a priority, honestly. I mean, I would love to make this coat for myself but I'm not going to get to it anytime soon. So um, I'm going to take this apart and show you um, a quick piece. I'm going to put her aside for a minute. Sorry, I should have had my um, stand out so I could show you this easier. Oh, you're fine. Okay. So basic draping, um, you just, this is all cut for us, but if you can picture this in like a rectangle, this little piece, if you can just picture this as a rectangle before all of the lines and the darts and things like that have been made into it, that's all you need. Here is a center front line 
And then the important um, balance lines are, and this would be on grain, the center front, and then the bust line here and the waistline um, because this is a bodice. You know, if you were doing a dress or pants or something like that, you might want to add the hip. And then if I take this back, so if you can imagine, um, the center front lines up. I'm going to try to do this here like that. So this is just super basic again. And then the neckline, I'm following the it's a little backwards in the mirror. Following that, and I'll take it down to her waist. And you would, you would need to allow extra fabric at the top and at the bottom, um, just to give yourself room to, to you know, move the fabric and, and be able to um, get the proportions right, the size, the, the darting, that sort of thing. Um, so, so the uh, part is to line up the center front and yes. bust and waist. Yes, so here's a balance line, if you can see that going, and that just follows the bust, and the same, I can't hold her up too good, the same at the waist. Oh, and see. again, okay. because this is a bodice, and normally, had I not cut this already, we would have fabric up here, we would have extra fabric going over the shoulder, and then we would have some fabric there. So you need it longer than what your actual measurements are, okay? The so longer and wider. Longer and wider, yes. And width, width varies a lot because it, that goes off of your personal measurements because, you know, if you're, if you're a very full bust, you would need more, you know, out here to come around to the side. And, you know, opposite being true if you're not um, as busty that way. So, okay. So for the, wide, the width of your fabric, should it be the bust then, like a little bit wider than the bust measurement that you would be taking? Half of the bust. Right, half of the bust. Okay, right. so my rule of thumb, the center front, I always give um, uh, extra over here, allow at least an inch. Okay. You know, an inch this way, and an inch on the side seam too. So half of your bust measurement, you know, this or this, quarter let's say this quarter of your bust measurement because we're only working on the front right and then add the extra on the side top and bottom and up right. here you need um i shared this with uh the other gals that i was talking to you need extra from the top here because your shoulder sits higher than your front neck and i it, it's easy to not have enough when you want to come around and and if you if you clip it just that length, you need to have it come around and then taking the dart in. Got so, it. And the dart makes all the difference too, again, depending on what your bus size is. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna line, this one's pretty easy because she's kind of already done, but I'm just lining up the bus line with that. And this would be good, you know, to do just to get a start on, um, you know, <clears throat> the a basic bodice for yourself so you could turn it into anything that you wanted to hang from the shoulders, you know, uh, a top, a jacket, a coat, anything like that. So, and that's where, that's where pattern drafting and draping go hand in hand. Got it. You really need to. Everyone on, have you done draping before? Have you tried draping? Mm -hmm or let us know in the comments section if you ever tried draping before or is that the um, preferred method you like to use to make your patterns all right okay so i don't know can you see this okay <laughs> okay so i have the dart i'm going to take the dart uptake here and i just and again this is already drawn in sorry i can't see So Mary Ellen so says, yes, took an online class and learn lots. Yeah, Mary Ellen, I can't remember which one was that. Was that with Moda? No, that was with, um, uh, 
Oh, she does couture work. Um, Linda, is it Linda? Mary Ellen, what, what online class did you take? And so okay. much. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You I was thinking a... Linda Maynard. Did you guys enjoy it? Mary said she learned lots. Roz, is that a preferred method that you like to use? Okay, so how, how much, how do you know how much dart, you know, um, how much do you have to take in for the dart? How do you know how much? Okay, so that the, the body tells you. Okay. The body tells you. So this was out here. Um, again, it's a, by doing one pre-done, it's a little hard to get the full demonstration. But there was all of this excess over here. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. see that? So then I could just bring it over and create the dart. If I were creating the dart on this before the pattern piece, I would take it up like this. I would create the dart like that. Got it. Okay. And so then you would know how much your uptake is. And it's, and the idea is that it's flat along the body. So from the neck to, and then of course you would want to have it centered over the shoulder for mm -hmm. a shoulder princess seam. And I like to do princess seams. I like to drape, but the dart at the shoulder, because you instantly have princess seams. It saves a step because you can, you can cut this and you would have your princess seam already done for you. Makes sense. Yeah. So it's just a, a quick, you know what, I'll pin this one. So while you're, pin, pin, uh, while you're pinning, I'll read. Um, Blue Dot So says, yep, mostly work in flat and usually digital as a first draft. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Me, not try draping, but I keep educating myself about it. Carrie is inspiring me. So you're like me, Samina. I haven't tried draping yet. Mary Ellen so says, yes, it's Linda Maynard and so much fabric. I like it, but not preferred. So yeah, everybody has their preferences. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I know, you know, I'm just going to say for me, I think my brain just understands how to manipulate fabric easier mm -hmm. than how to create a design line and have it fit. Because every time you change a design line, you're changing fit somewhere, you know, right. there's a reaction to where, where something goes. So now it's like the dart at the waistline where the princess yes. continue. Is yes. what you're working yes. Maybe you and uh, maybe Samina, Samina, maybe you and I can try draping <laughs> our project, our next project. So you can see, you got the. It's okay, fitted. yeah. Now, this is fitted, of course. So we have, you know, your waist dart and then the shoulder dart. And again, you know, for those of you that sew a lot, it's not hard to know that you can just connect for a princess line, you can just connect going down the center of each dart. And that can be cut to create your princess line and then just add seam allowance. Mm. So you just cut right through the, the darts, straight through the darts. Is that what you're saying? Not until, um, not on this. I wouldn't do it on this because you would take this off and then take it back to paper. And so the paper would be, you would mark your paper with the center front line, mm -hmm. the bust horizontal line, the waist horizontal line, lay it down flat and then um, put the paper over the fabric is usually easier. And okay. because even in these little, what I've learned um, too is that muslin, muslin can work as your pattern, but if you want it really correct and true, you would take it back to paper. Got it, okay. Yeah, before you cut fashion fabric. Yeah. 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 It, just, it just cleans everything all up, everything matches, you don't have any shoulder issues not working. And then again, um, if you wanted to, you would have your bodice with the darts, but when the, it was on flat pattern, you could take a line through the center of the darts and then be able to create the pattern piece by cutting those dart excess out. Does that make sense? 
Can you say it again one more time? <laughs> you I, said I, cut through the darts, right? Through the center I'm, first. I'm flat pattern. Let's say this was laid out flat and you've traced it all off. So it's flat. The darts are open. The center of the dart would, there's, there would be a line through the center of each dart. If you wanted to make a princess line, you would cut along the edges of the dart, blend it here, and then up. Okay, got it. And then add the seam allowance. Yes. Got it. Okay, with yes. the princess, you add the seam allowance. Yes. Got it. Okay, okay, I get it now. I get yes, it. Yes, with all of it, you have to add the seam allowance because, um, like, I would dot these now with the pins in there before I take it off the form. I have the center front line, I would dot the neck all the way around. I would dot the shoulder. I would make sure I knew where the dart legs were to end. Come around here, I would dot along the arm hole. I would dot the side. So when you say dart, dot, mm -hmm. dot, you're just marking. Literally dotting, literally dot. dotting. Yep, just taking the pencil, you know, right along that tape, you know. Uh -huh. Right, and that's why there's the black tape. I guess I don't have any around here older, but that's why there's these different tapes in that too, so you can see that or feel that if you can't see it. You know, things get thick and you can't see it sometimes too, but you can feel it. Um, so then. What kind this, of pen? Yeah, this is a retractable pencil, mechanical pencil, and it's a graphite gear 1000. Absolutely my favorite. This one is a size seven. The one that I honestly, what I use for drafting is this size nine. I like it. Yeah. Drafting. So it, it um, retracts. So, and then you're not sharpening pencils all the time, that type of thing. Makes sense. Efficiency. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that would be the very basic. So then this would come off. Um, you, you dotted both sides of the dart. Um, and then you basically connect the dots after it's off to create your stitching lines. And then from the stitching lines, you add whatever seam allowances that you prefer. Got it, got it. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. Nice. Anyone on here wants to try it? Wants to try draping? <laughs> you have it already all right let us know what you've draped before but drape a bodice did you drape a coat let us know what you draped i would like to share that draping you can drape your pattern pieces on your dress forms you can um i i feel like i can't stress this um, enough in the sense that there's always a center front there's always a center back most patterns have a reference point to waist or bust or hip, again, depending. So if you start drawing those on your pattern pieces, you can lay it up and find out exactly where you might need to make adjustments if you need to make any adjustments. So draping has taught me how to fit a hundred times better than just circumference because it's those vertical, let's go back to her, those vertical balance lines that make all the difference. So the distance from here to here and from the bust to the waist and the waist to the hip. If you put those in reference to your store-bought patterns, it's gonna help you fit so much better. Mm -hmm. You know, and if, if you only have one, you can use your own measurements from, let's say you have the waist, but you don't have the bust. So you can, if you know your personal measurement, length measurement, you can put that on the pattern. You can put that up to your body and, and does it work? You know, do you need to add or subtract? You know, that type of thing on a regular pattern piece too. So, so there's like, a lot of. On the regular pattern, I know like they have circles like for the bust. Mm -hmm. And so you would just draw a line. Would you just draw a line right across? Yep. I would draw this line straight across the pattern piece. Okay. You know, just straight across from center front or center back. Everything's going to be straight. You know, the body curves, but on flat pattern, 
um, you want it to be straight and then change. Yeah. It's making sense to me now. I, I can see Okay, it. good, good. Everybody, yeah. make sense to everyone else? Yeah? Yeah, because now it's making sense to me about draping and using um, patterns to drape as well. Okay, okay. Got it. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I just really think that even if you're not draping and you don't have a dress form and things like that, to get a better fit, if you start using techniques of draping in your fitting, you're going to get a much better fit because even widths. So if you know your center front point to your high, your bus point, if you know that distance, that's not going to change. So you can make sure that it's that distance on your pattern piece mm. okay same thing from from the bus point to the side seam and you know and if there's ease in there add the ease that's not a problem you know you can add as much ease as you want to you can have it as fitted this is very fitted but if you wanted the ease you could add the ease in there too something i learned from mona how though is when you're when you have ease it needs to disappear whatever fullness you're putting in it needs to disappear before it gets to the shoulder. Blue Dot So says the HBLs help fitting so much. Yes. And what's HBL? <laughs> horizontal balance line. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so that would be that would be this one. So the horizontal balance line. And so I the... talk a lot about the vertical balance line because as a draper, that has helped me grow so much in fitting is knowing these measurements the length measurements between the bust and the waist and the waist and the hip, you know, and also your center front to, you know, whatever your hem length is going to be. It is all making sense There's to me so now, many. Carrie. <laughs> Yay. Good. Good. Hey, okay. get it. I get it now. Yes. Cause I'm, I'm mostly self-taught. I've only taken one formal sewing class. So I'm always envious when others know, you know, to classes and have so much information. And um, I always feel a little bit behind. I just know how to, I just do the, uh, the fitting, the adjustments, you know, and all that stuff. So from a pattern. I yeah, work from I, the <laughs> I'm completely self-educated too. Yeah. 100%. I mean, back in the day, you know, junior high, high school, I took all of the sewing classes that were available to me and that, so this, you know, and it wasn't until my kids started leaving home that I thought about what am I gonna do? And that's when I could just really dive in. And I've always, you know, I've always wanted to be a designer. So yeah. that kind of has never left me. So a draping, draping just came easier to me than pattern drafting. And so I just have studied and been fortunate enough to come across some very good educators to help yeah. me grow in that way too. And it's, you know, it's been online, it's been distance learning, it's been all those things. So, you know. Well, that leads into, is this a good point to lead into So Connected? Because I, yes, I recently um, attended Project Prairie and learned so much from you there and from all the ladies. So, um, so you start, had started this sewing community, So Connected. Yeah, and I have signed on and um, paid my fees to join. You know, it's a very minimal fee. It's worth it because it has a wealth of information on there. Um, can you explain to everybody what it's what so connected is about, and you know, what are the type of resources on there for them, and then the optional um, fees that they can pay? Um, sure. Yeah, so because I am self-educated, one of the hardest things for me has been to find the help and support that I need to be able to grow my skills. And so I thought it would be helpful to create a space, online space, that would bring everything from the, not everything, but um, sewing garment making resources to one place and I call that so connected with the purpose of connecting you to the resources that you need at the time that you need them so they're under one house so if you need if you're looking for an educator of a specific kind it should be listed if you're looking for a technique a construction technique it could be listed 
um, news and this, I call it um, knowledge notions and news, if, you know, for garment makers. And you letters out with new information and new resources. Yes, every week there's a newsletter going out and every week I'm adding new content and I'm always open to, you know, search and hunt for the information that you might need or any, you know, member might need to, you know, because it's hard. There's a lot out there. Um, just last week I've been searching, you know, fitting shoulders is it can be a real challenge. And I, I was discouraged because I wasn't finding what I wanted to be able to share inside the community. And everything inside the community is a direct link to that person's work, um, giving them credit to, you know, it's just housing and all of it, making it quick, easy, convenient to find help, get support, get guidance, you know, get social get supplies, you know, fabric stores and notions and different things like that are all housed inside of So Connected too. Yeah, it says most of, I mean, I'm sure you guys have all faced it too, because like if I want to search for something, there's just so much information out on the internet. And so what Carrie does is she combs through the internet already to find the, you know, the top, you know, videos or posts or blogs and she narrows it down for us on on to so connected so she basically does all the research for you and then yes as it yeah it's curated content yes and with a focus on um you know vision what's your what's your goal what's your plan um fitting construction and then if you want to drape or pattern draft how you can take you know go those next steps in that mm -hmm. in that way that's all inside of so connected to yep and you could always email carrie at carrie at carrie um you know if you have any questions you know and you can ask her directly as well if you if any of what if anyone on here is you know part of um so connected, please let us know how your experience is with it and um, how you benefit from it. Please leave it in the comment section. <laughs> but yes, yes, thank you, Carrie, for just coming through the World Wide Web and yeah. narrowing, it, narrowing down the information for us. Yeah, yeah, it's a passion project for me. I mean, I, I love to learn and I keep wanting to improve my own skills and that. And so it's like, why not help other people that want to do this too? Yep. So, and make it easier, you know, cause it takes a lot of time and you know, what you really want to do is be sewing. You don't want to be searching, especially when you have a project that you want to do and complete, but you're not quite sure of how it should go. You know, that type of thing. Blue dot says I'm in the community and it saves time. Yes. The best, um, best, best. I hope I'm saying that right. Thanks so much. Yes. It's a great yeah. resource. And it's so connected, spell S-E-W, connected, by the way. I know I didn't clarify that. Um, but yes, can DM me, too, with questions if they have questions. So, Yes. That's another option to, to connect with Carrie is go to her IG and DM her at Carrie Kim. That's another option. Or you can email her at Carrie at Carrie Kim .com. Right. If you guys have any questions about it, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Um, oh, yes. And the options, the, the three different ways they can join So, con so Connected. Because I know okay. I have the annual, the yeah. annual, the annual I have, option. I have three pi price points, and that is um, monthly, quarterly, and annually. And, you know, if you're not sure, you want to give it a try, but you're not sure, or, you know, um, monthly is a really good option. Quarterly allows you to kind of stay in and see what happens over time. And you guys, it is just getting off the ground. I have so many intentions to just build it and make it, you know, like I want to um, put in office hours and different things like that, too. So you have somebody that you can go to so to support and we can just kind of work through things, that type of thing. And then annual, because um, uh, Myself, if there's an annual option, I'm going to choose it because I don't like, I have to, I've done the books on the farm and it's just one less input thing that I have to do and all of the other book work that I have to do. So, yeah, that's yeah. as well. 
<laughs> yeah, and it's the best price. You know, you it's the best price for. So what are, what are the prices for the options? You have the annual, you have oh, the monthly. Okay, so monthly is fifteen dollars a month. Quarterly is forty dollars, and annual is one hundred and fifty dollars. Very yeah. minimal. So yes, I encourage you guys to join. Um, so connected if, if that's an option for you it's a great resource and you know if you want like for example I do want to try draping and I can go more in depth um, on draping um, through so connected just to get more information and you know and to learn um, more in-depth information about dra draping so so connected is a great resource yeah, just this week, um, there was a person that commented on um, about being able to drape a corset, and you absolutely can drape a corset. So yeah, and there's a, there's a lot of resources out there, again, and part of the problem is, how do you know, you know, what what's what's a good resource or that type of thing. And it, you know, there's a lot of information out there, but I noticed when I was looking through, um, because this person had asked, I went searching for them and I noticed you know they're not using the balance lines they're not showing you any of that important key aspects of draping and so it's just like okay so that you know it's tossed out for me as a resource to put in so connected if they're not going to share those important tips then I'm not going to put it in so connected so yeah oh yeah no it just made me think about at Project Prairie how you had all the books out for us right there as a resource yeah. for us kind of narrowed down all the books that we would need on any of our projects so you're kind of like that what well, we call you the sewing concierge yeah <laughs> we go to carrie if we have any questions or you know if we need any assistance on on anything like when we need a fitting or we had a question we would go to you you were the go-to person so yes we call you the sewing concierge yeah, and thanks for that. Um, I I may not be the expert, you know, in draping and construction and couture work and all of those things. I definitely practice them and, and like to do them, but I do know how to find help. And that's where So Connected comes in. That's me wanting to help all of you find the help that you need when you need it, quick and easy access. Yeah. So yes, join So Connected if you have the option. Um, and that leads also into Project Prairie Sewing Retreat. So not are not only are you a resource, like a you know, a place to go and look for information, but you have an option to also go in person yes. and meet you in person and you be again a resource and a guide and so the sewing concierge to help us. So can you tell us a little bit how Project Prairie started? I, I had the honor of attending this year. Um, hi, Spotty Girl. She's just looking in on you, Carrie. You look thank you, Robin. Cousin awesome. so Robin. That's yeah, thank you. Wow. How special for you to be here today. Thanks for that. Um, so it's very Yeah. But yes, in-person resource as well, um, where we get to go and you know, learn new skills and um, get to sew in a, in a community, a little, a, a small community, a group of ladies that come together. Um, could be men too, but we come together, kind of like the so, so connected, but in person. Right, yeah, I, get, I, I have a theme going, right? I want to connect everybody with, <laughs> with uh, sewing, you know, the way that it works best for you. So. Yeah. Um, Project Prairie came about because I was invited by some garment making friends here in Nebraska to attend a quilt retreat um, at Schuyler, Nebraska at the St. Benedict Center where I hold this now annually. And it was so good that it was just amazing. And I thought this was the missing element for garment makers where because these quilters would go and they would bring all of their stuff and their, you know, huge machines and all the tools and everything to make it work. And they would just sew and work on their projects for four days, you know, and I just thought that's what's missing with garment makers. We need more of that because, you know, life gets in the way so often of 
you know, your intentions of what you would like to sow, you know, jobs, family, you know, all kinds of things. And so I wanted to, I thought if, if people could set aside a certain amount of time for a project period, it's four days, then that allows you to just sow and work on your projects of your choice. And if you want fitting help, you can get it. Um, you know, because sometimes there's just things that you can't fit, especially the back. You know, mm -hmm. the back on anybody is really, really hard. So, yeah. you know, on again, off again, seeing it, pinching it, you know, if you just have yourself to be working with. So it's a really good time to get fitting help that way, too. So yeah, I thought we needed we needed to do that. I didn't know if it would work. And so I just put myself out there. And it was, I'm going to say that first year, it was the best thing. It was the best thing. People came and I was so excited and they liked it. They wanted to do it again. So we scheduled it for the next year. COVID hit. So we tried it online, virtual, and that seemed to work pretty well. We went with the theme that time. Um, and that was, we worked on pants, fitting pants, and we could make it work. So that was, that was pretty fun. And that's why I thought office hours inside Co So Connected would be a really good option for people too, because sometimes you just, you know, you maybe want to hash something out with somebody or, you know, we can take, like, we can take pictures and I can draw on a picture and say, you know, try this and send it back to you. So it's pretty instant. You know, yeah. when we did the pant retreat, it seemed to work pretty well for most you know, pants are challenging, you know, they just take time and effort. Um, but pants are a really good one to work on in at so or at Project Prairie. Sorry, God. Yeah, if I can make sure that's my goal is for pant fitting. And yeah. what's really cool, I thought getting to attend in person this year uh, was seeing blue dot sews join us virtually. Yeah, yeah. I was really glad that she could pop in when it worked for her. Um, you know, and that's, that could be an option too. I mean, it, it was kind of a test run, you know, Diane and I have been friends for 40 plus years. So, <laughs> which is just really great. And so, you know, it, it's a little bit comfortable trying these things out for the first time before you might decide to go. But I think, you know, so with COVID, so many of us are used to doing this kind of online thing now. So I see that Diane just said that, you know, it really did work to fit online, you know, to help with the fitting. And it is, it was surprising, but we could make it work. So, you know, to me, that's very hopeful. Mary Ellen says that would be a great option living in, <clears throat> excuse me, living in Arizona. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. need a chance. Yes. Attend um, Project Prairie. But it, it'd be wonderful if you could attend in person because from my experience, um, just the facility, the landscape, everything. I mean, you're in a remote area and you're just focused, you know, it's relaxing, it's peace and quiet. So, yeah. Or maybe Eric can go to Arizona one day too. <laughs> I so hope so, Mary Ellen. I hope we get to have class again someday that, you know, we're, we, we know each other. So it's just, you know, she's, lovely person. So yeah, I hope that I hope that happens. Yeah, both ways, both ways. But yeah, and that's part of I call it being pampered prairie style, because you know, out in farm country, there's nothing. And the St. Benedict Center is what I call a little gem. It's not too far from the airports, but it's a little john. It's about an hour and a half drive. Is that right, Anne? Yes. It's yeah. About yeah. And so, um, but, so and when we you get you attend to go to the Omaha airport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think just with the airlines, you know, I think it's just a problem. But you know, that's that's just part of travel, I guess, when you're flying. Um, uh, so back to I think that um, being pampered prairie style is you don't have to cook. You don't have to worry about work or family or anything like that. You, like Anne says, you can just be focused on your sewing, which I think for so many people is hard, you know, to really be able to not have the distractions, yeah. you know, when you do want to sew and always the intentions of wanting and to. Also what's great is that you don't have the strict structure 
as well. You know, you're very, it was a very easy going structure. We just all, you know, had the room to go into. If you needed a break anytime, you would just go take a break at your convenience, basically. The only thing that was fixed was um, the meals, the, t the meal times. Right. And I, I, I personally like it that way because there's people that are really productive in the morning mm -hmm. and there's people, you know, that are really productive in the evening. I'm one of those. I get my second wind in the evening, that type of thing. And so it can work, you know, for everybody in that sense. And, and again, just having the meals scheduled like they are is, is nice. So you can work around that and you can quit and begin any time that you want to. There's 24 hour access to the room. And I know I've been in classes um, a a across the nation where we've been up till two, three, four in the morning, sometimes trying to get things done, you know, getting to the next step prepared, that type of thing. So um, yeah, well, it was a wonderful experience. Thank you so much, Carrie, for organizing Project Prairie. I know behind the scenes, it takes a lot of time to organize that. And then I know you had a wedding. <laughs> At the same time, we're trying to organize this. But thank you so much for that, Carrie, because really it's something that I, for me personally, I needed it. I needed a break. I think, um, you know, just a, because of all the things that was just happening as well, you know, around the world, I just needed a, a place to just to go and just get clarity as well. So, you know, not only was it a sewing retreat, a, a wonderful sewing retreat, I made it into a personal uh, spiritual retreat and that's on top of everything else it was just a beautiful experience so thank you so much for that because i know i needed that <laughs> it was absolutely my pleasure absolutely it, it just i just again i think that's kind of a missing component in the garment making you know garment sewists that we're not doing more of this type of thing you know there are no instructors to pay and there's always such an amazing amount of collective wisdom in a room Yes. You know, where somebody knows something about something to help somebody else. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I just love that. I love that. And, you know, to have the environment where people feel like they can freely ask and freely share. Mm -hmm. I just, that means everything to me. Yep. So, because, but you know, everyone there was so resourceful or they had, they also had their own books that they brought and was, yeah. really, so it was great. It was great. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think, so yeah, <laughs> I'm just like, there's a, 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 just going back to you being a sewing concierge, um, you know, you have your Instagram where you share your information, you have so connected where you have this wealth of resources that you've narrowed down for us. And then you have Project Prairie where you get to attend in person um, and we can, you know, gain additional skills just to and learn from everybody as well like you said it's just a wealth of so everything that you provide is like a wealth of information <laughs> mary ellen says at connie we need to go next year you guys should you guys should at least once you know try it out once um, <laughs> with nothing stops and gets in the way but yeah okay, so mary ellen highly you recommend are? sorry I just want to say, mark your calendar for August 28th through September 1st, 2022. Yep. And if they get to 2022, there's 2023 already. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, so yes, it's booked out. The, the, the St. Benedict Center is booked out in, for two, the next two years for Project Prairie. So try to make it in 2022. If not, you can always make it in 2023. If not, you can make it to both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come to both. We'd love to have you, yeah. So thank you so much, Carrie, um, for your time coming on, sharing and teaching us about draping, um, the basics of draping, and sharing about your So Connected community and about Project Prairie. I appreciate all you do for the sewing community. Um, so if you guys have not already followed Carrie, feel, feel free make sure to go over to Carrie Kim and follow her. Um, and I encourage you to join So Connected and also to um, try to make it out to Project Perry one of these days. 
And if you haven't already, um, I just finished editing a video um, from my personal experience of Project Prairie, and I uploaded it onto my YouTube channel. So feel free to check it out. Um, thank you all for joining us. And I know, Carrie, you have maybe an inspirational quote to kind of close it for us. Do your best. Just do your best. I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. It, it, yeah, it, no, perfect. Yes. Yes, just do your best. That's all you can do. That's all, you know. It yeah. really, really is. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. And you guys go watch the video. Oh, my gosh. I got to watch it this morning. It is so good. If you oh. want, I, I think she just captured Project Prairie in so many beautiful ways. So go check out her YouTube channel and watch it. It's so pretty. Yeah, it's so good. Thank, Thank you, you, Anne. I tried my best because I wanted to capture the essence and I wanted to make sure it was up to your caliber. I tried. Oh. I know there was um, recording that was a little shaky, but, you know, I did my best and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. So, you, oh my gosh, I'm proud of it. It's, it's, you went above and beyond. It's so pretty. It's so nice. And it just, you know, it means so much to me. So thank you for doing all of that. Yeah. Thank you, thank you everyone for joining us. Go do your best today. And I always also conclude with take care of yourselves, take care of each other, call someone, text someone, message someone see how they're doing. And if someone um, did something kind, send a thank you letter. All right. Um, snail mail. Perfect. But yes, everybody take care of yourselves. And we will see you next week. Thank you so much, Carrie. Take care, everyone. Bye. <laughs>